Hey guys, so what we've got here today is my Super 160P TIG stick and plasma cutter. And as you can see, the plasma cutter isn't working. So today we're going to go through the steps to diagnose what's wrong with it. Okay, so this uh, combination machine has served me well. I've had it for well at least seven years and probably closer to ten, maybe even more than that. And uh, recently it's developed a problem with the plasma cutting portion. Uh, TIG still works but uh, plasma cutting isn't working and I've never tried stick so I don't know if that's still working or not but it, I figure it doesn't matter if TIG works. That kind of tells me that the machine is mostly working. Okay so we can go over the obvious things first. First of all check your grounding then check your consumables to make sure that there's nothing wrong with them. Then check the obvious stuff like that your air pressure is set right, that you actually have power getting to your unit and, uh, and see what else potentially is working with it. Now with my 3-in-1 machine I can check to see that the TIG is working, in which it is. So it kind of tells me that the machine for the most part is working, so it's probably something fairly simple. So let's go over everything else step by step. Okay, so the easiest thing to check first is your consumables. Check to see that your shield, ceramic shield, is intact, not cracked, and properly seals around this little o-ring down here. Next, have a look at the nozzle and have a look at it, see if it's damaged, plugged, or otherwise corroded. This one's a little bit rough looking, but it's clear all the way through. The nozzle isn't obstructed, and I don't believe it's the problem. There should be also a little ceramic insulator here, and all that does is it keeps this, <laughs> get it out, from touching the nozzle. Now, what you'll see is that looks good, that's pretty much brand new. The other end has a little bit of damage. What I've seen happen is, is that the center section of that burns out and eventually stops uh, you know, cutting efficiently. So once that's done, put it all back together and we'll have a look at the next thing. Okay, so a really obvious problem also can be your grounding. Now, non-intuitively, on this machine, the ground is plugged into the positive terminal on this machine. What you can do is you can check to make sure that this is intact. You know, ohm it out between your clip and the uh, end of this with your uh, multimeter, and that'll tell you if there's a problem with this. I'm not going to bother doing that because I know this machine was working in TIG mode, so that with the exact same ground clamp, and uh, I didn't have any problems at all. So I'm pretty confident that's not the problem. You can also look to make sure that you're not getting a bad ground in here. The ground strap is actually broken off on one side of this one, but uh, this side was contacting the metal reasonably well, so I don't. I know that's not the problem. So let's have a look at the next thing. So at this point, we want to determine at what point the failure is occurring. Now, if I turn the machine on, you can see that it actually starts up, fans start working, and the display shows some activity. Uh, on this particular unit, when you adjust the base amps, nothing happens on the uh, display when it's not running. On some units, it will show a reaction, so you can always check that. Um, when I press the button on the actual plasma torch, you can hear it starts up the, uh, or it opens the uh, air solenoid valve, and air starts rushing through it. So, uh, you know, in all likelihood, the switch is working correctly. So uh, in my case, it's only a you know a single pole switch, so it's pretty simple. So it's pretty obvious it's going to be working. So now we're starting to get to the point where we might want to think about opening up the unit. Before we do that, uh, we'll check out a couple of different things with specifically with the torch itself. Okay, so at this point we're going to do a basic check of the torch itself. Now if you've got another unit you can test with, you could try your torch with that. Or if you've got another torch you could try with your unit, you could try that as well and see if that works. Now in my case I don't have that luxury, so I'm going to do a basic check out of the torch itself. So the first thing we'll check is that the switch has good continuity. So we'll take our ohmmeter on continuity test mode, probe the connector, hit the button, and as we can see, that's working fine and we had a pretty good idea that that was not going to be a problem because when I'd uh, tried it before you press the button and we'd see the air solenoid was engaging so obviously that was working so the next thing to check is in my case my torch makes the electrical connection for the actual plasma cutting power through the hose now I assume there's a wire inside the hose and I think it's a pretty good guess uh, so what you need to do is you need to take your ohmmeter and probe between this point, 
which is where the electrical connection is made. I wouldn't touch to the nut since the nut is loosely attached to it. This is where the real electrical connection is made. And the head of the unit. So what you're going to do is take that apart and just do a quick test here where we'll check to make sure that this and this are making good electrical contact and as we can see zero ohms there. So it's a pretty good guess that the torch or at least the torch in my case is not the problem. Now you also might want to check to see if you've got good airflow coming out of the tip of the torch. In my case I did. Um, if you don't, then there may be a damage, you know, damage to the airline or this, even you know, this fitting could be loose and that could be part of your problem. So in any case, we'll move on to the next thing to do. Okay, so the last thing I'll check is that, that we've got adequate air pressure going into the unit. And as you can see, I've got my regulator set to 70 PSI. This one isn't a very good one. It fluctuates quite a bit between 60 and 70 and drops quite a lot when uh, you activate the unit. But it seems adequate for what it is. I'm getting good airflow out of the nozzle. Pressure isn't dropping dramatically. And I probably wouldn't get worried even if it dropped down to 40 PSI or something like that. Because as long as I'm getting good airflow, I'm not worried about it. So, at this point, it's starting to seriously look like we're going to have to open this unit up and have a look at it. Okay, disclaimer time. As with any line voltage connected appliance, there will be lethal voltages present inside. Unplug everything, discharge all capacitors inside before you do any servicing work on it. And do some research. I can't possibly give you every scenario that could kill you in one of these devices, and there are a lot. So do be careful. And if you're not comfortable servicing it, leave it to somebody else to do the work. No service call is going to cost as much as a coffin. End of disclaimer. Okay, so a billion screws later and the top is off of this thing, and as you can see, it's really dusty. Uh, that could be causing part of my problem. So the first thing we're going to try and do is we're going to try and blow all the dust out of this thing, clean it up, and make sure that something, uh, some bit of dust isn't causing a spark to jump across someplace it shouldn't be and affecting the plasma cutter portion. Hey guys, so I've opened up the unit and powered it up. I know, do as I say, not as I do. But uh, what I'm zeroing in on is a small spark gap inside the unit that's part of the high frequency start that's used during TIG welding and plasma cutting to initially touch off the little uh, initial spark between the, uh, the uh, torch you know, and the uh, workpiece. And what you're going to see there is it working. Now previously, when I first opened up the unit, I tried it out and I was not seeing any spark gap between there at least for plasma. When I switched over to TIG it worked correctly, which is interesting. So I believe I'm pretty close to the uh, source of the problem. I've tweaked the spark gap and that's what got it working again as well. I was able to actually do a little bit of light cutting. So I think that once I figure out what that gap is supposed to be, and there's unfortunately no specs, we'll find out the problem. Okay, so playing around with that spark gap and getting the uh, high frequency start to work for plasma has gotten it to the point where at least they can cut some thin materials. Now this plasma cutter was never good with anything really thick. Uh, this stuff here is, I don't know what it is, I think it's thinner than 16 gauge anyways. And it can certainly pierce it, but it seems to be having some problems making a nice clean cut. So I think I'm going to have to do a little bit more tweaking on it. It may not be this spark gap. There still may be some other issues associated with this device, but uh, we'll see. As it sits right now, you can see that it does cut. It doesn't make a great cut, but it does cut. So I think we're closer to fixing this unit here. Okay, so I think I've got a pretty good idea what the problem is. There's two problems. First problem, that spark gap. For whatever reason, the plasma cutter portion wasn't working correctly with high frequency start, and just tweaking those uh, contacts seemed to help a lot. But there's another problem. I was seeing that the plasma cutter was lacking in power. And I tried something, and I'll show you the results.
So how do you like that? It's working perfectly now if I use the TIG torch foot pedal <laughs> to control it. So what it seems like we got a couple of different problems here. High frequency start was a problem, that's fixed now. The second problem, and I'll show you right now. So it looks like the second problem is the base current potentiometer. Looks like it's not working. And the reason why I didn't notice it when I was using TIG is I always use the foot pedal with TIG. So I come to use the uh, plasma cutter, which I would always disconnect the foot pedal for, and now that knob isn't working. So looks like if I replace this potentiometer, my plasma cutter problems are solved. Either that or I just use the foot pedal all the time with the TIG welder. Hard to say. Okay guys, so obviously when I was doing my testing with the pedal and the pedal made the plasma cutter work, um, the pedal was controlling the base current. Now, normally, obviously, when I'm, you know, plasma cutting, I wouldn't use a pedal and I would disconnect it so that it wouldn't interfere. And that's what led me to conclude that this potentiometer right here, uh, which is the base current control, was out of spec. And I did some testing, you know, after, uh, after I figured that out and uh, obviously it's way out of spec um, you know like I'm seeing values of well 68k it bounces all over the place down to 29 you know 30k basically well here's the catch the way I'm measuring this the lowest value I should see should be zero and the highest value I should see would be 10k because this is a 10k potentiometer. So this one is so far out of spec that it's crazy. You know, like it's uh, amazing that anything worked there. Um, this isn't consistent with what I was measuring uh, the last time. Uh, you know, like off camera, I was seeing values of 8k for a low to 24k for a high. And uh, yeah, suffice it to say, something is really weird with this unit. So, what I'm going to do is I went to CL and I picked up a potentiometer. Or I picked up a bunch of them. These are 10K potentiometers. Uh, obviously, nothing looks nothing like those ones, but, uh, you know, same rating. So it should do, for at least for a test. What I'm going to do is I'm going to replace that one with this one, put it all back together, and see if it works. If it works, then I'll look into sourcing some uh, some ones that are a little bit more like that one, but uh, if not, uh, then I'll just use the one, that one right there. Okay, so the potentiometer is replaced. I've got the machine reassembled. Let's give it a go here. Just make sure I'm not gonna cut through my uh, bench here. There you go. So there you go guys. That was the problem. Now the next question is whether or not I can be bothered to go and source those uh, original you know, potentiometers and replace them. And I probably am going to, if I do, I'm going to replace them all. Because uh, I did test a couple of the other ones and they seemed out of spec. A couple other things I forgot to mention that I did test. Um, I checked out all of the MOSFETs that were easily accessible. I know that sounds lazy but uh, I'd have to dismantle this thing to get into the ones that are way in the middle bottom. You know, I was able to test these ones along the top middle and top middle along this side. And obviously the ones on the outside bottom as well as the top. But uh, otherwise it was too hard. Or not worthwhile, especially when I didn't think that was the problem. Anyways, so I think we're good to go on this thing here. I'm going to reassemble it. The only problem that I have is these. this uh, potentiometer does push the panel back a bit. And you know you can see that some of these uh, ones I can't even get the uh, nut on them. And I don't want to pull them through and tighten them because it will distort the board. I'm not too happy with that one right there. Anyways, regardless guys, it's working. There you go, another fix it Friday for you guys. 
enjoy. Thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe, and check out the affiliate links in the description.